In this presentation, we will take a look at adjusting entries related to notes payable. Now, for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Remember what adjusting entries are as compared to just normal day-to-day -day type journal entries. The adjusting entries are something that happened at the end of the time period and we're going to make some type of planned adjustment at the end of the time period, either the month or year, in order to make the financial statements correct on an accrual basis. The adjusting entries typically include a balance sheet account, something above the blue line, in our case above retained earnings, typically do not include cash, and also include an income statement account, so one balance sheet account, one income statement account. And that's going to be usually the rules. Now, the adjusting process also notes that normal adjusting entries are part of the plan, meaning they're not correction of errors. Uh, so that's what we're going to set up here. We're going to think about how can we set up the loan payment to plan for an adjusting entry process to make the two components as easy as possible in order to make the data input for the accounting department as easy as possible and in order to just make a quick adjustment at the end of the time period that would be as easy as possible. Now this could also be a result of an error, something that had happened on accident that we then fix at the end of the, of the month or year just to put things correctly in place so that we can make the financial statements. But from this perspective, first I would like to look at it as just something that we're going to plan for. So we know that if we have a loan here, if we have a loan, the terms of the loan here are going to be a $100,000 loan, interest rate to 9%, number of payments 36, the payment amount 3180 if we want to make something as easy as possible on the accounting department, then we, we want this, the data entry to just be uh, data input, to just write the check, to just be able to write what is owed and let the system record the transaction. To do that, the easiest way is to, is to set the system up when you write the check for 3180 each pay period because the check amount will be the same. The other side, we can have the system just go to notes payable. So every time we write a check, then it would debit uh, notes payable, reducing the liability, and credit cash. That's not exactly proper because obviously part of this 3,180 is interest, not reduction of principal. And we're not allocating then at the point of payment the amount going to interest versus principal in accordance with the amortization table. Instead, just taking it all out of the note. And therefore, this note then we see is, is of course wrong. But, of course, we're planning for it to be wrong in this case. Why? There's a couple different reasons. One is that uh, it's possible that the data input doesn't even have the amortization table. They only have the loan, and the loan didn't give an amortization table, and they didn't. we didn't know how to derive it, possibly. Or it's possible that even if we derive the amortization table, it's it, these amounts allocating between interest and principal would differ each time. And we'd rather set the system up as easily as possible, just to basically say, every time you write a check, just write the check, and the system will do what it needs to do, just posting it to the note payable, and then we'll make the adjustment periodically at the end of the system, at the end of the, at the, end of the month or the end of the year, so that the financial statements are correct at the point in time we make the financial statements. So, in other words, these payments should have cash going out of 3180 and then the note payable for this first one being 2430 and then interest being 750 the second one should be cash going out of 3180 and then the debit being interest 732 uh, and a debit to 2448 for the note payable but this is of course a lot si simpler for the system to to do then at the end of the time period what we're going to do is just say okay now we have the amortization schedule. Three payments have been made. This is the point in time that we are at. All we're gonna do before making the financial statement as of the adjusting entries is to make this number uh, match this number here and record the interest, which will be the difference, which of course should be the interest amount. So in other words, we need to make the loan payment go down to match what the amortization table is at this point in time after three payments. So we're just going to take the 92,655 minus the 9460, and that's going to be a difference of 2,195. That should also equal the interest that didn't get recorded, which is the 750 plus the 732 plus 
the 713, the 2195. So what we're going to do is record that. Now we can think of this two ways. We can say the note payable is a credit. We need to make it go up to this 92,655. So we're going to do the same thing to it, a credit. The other side is going to be the interest expense. And expenses all have debits. And it's going to go up in the debit direction. So in other words, we're going to debit interest expense and credit the notes payable. And what that'll do when we post this then, the interest expense will go up to the amount that should be here for these three payments that were made that we, we didn't break out the interest for. And then the note payable will go, will go up from 90460 by the 2195 to the 92655. They're now matching what's on the amortization table. So there we have our, our adjusting entry. So periodically we can, we can make our amortization table work, uh, match what is on the trial balance, and record the interest expense uh, at that point in time on, a, on either a, a monthly basis or a yearly basis at the end and separate those two functions between the data input and uh, the adjusting process. Uh, now we could also see this uh, another way, whereas and this would probably more be like an error because this same thing could have happened like an error. It could be that uh, the, the data input didn't have this amortization schedule, so they could do one of two things. They probably wrote the check, and this is something we would just look for when we do our adjusting entries looking for errors. We would say, oh, well, the, amortiz this amort the note payable doesn't match the amortization table that we would have to derive possibly because we would get the note, and then we may not have an amortization table. We would make it, and then we would say, okay, this is where we are at after three payments. We think there should be three payments. And uh, we don't see that here, right? We don't see our note payable doesn't match up to this amount. Well, there's two things that could happen. We obviously know they wrote the check, so we would be able to find the checks that they wrote. But the other side either goes all to notes payable, possibly, or it all goes to interest expense, meaning the, the three entries they wrote this time was the cash is the same. They wrote the cash going down, but... The other side, they wrote all to interest expense, as if they weren't paying down any principal. It was only going to interest expense. So this is the, you know, the, the same kind of adjusting entry we could have. Now, if you're going to set up the system on purpose for them to do something easy, this would be easy to do as well. But it's probably better to put the amount to the notes payable and then adjust it, because then you don't have to worry about the interest expense being a temporary account and rolling out to the capital account, rolling out to retained earnings. So if we were to set up the system on purpose for them, for the, for the accounting department to just do the easiest thing possible, which would, this would be an easy journal entry, but it would be, it would be better to put it probably to, um, to the note payable rather than interest expense because notes payable is a permanent account and it might be easier to see the activity. We also might have other things going to interest expense for other notes or other type of, of interest, uh, that could muddy things up. Whereas the note payable, if we only have one account, for the one loan, it uh, would be a lot easier to see what's going on when we look at the GL, when we look at the detail. But if this is what happened, then of course we just need to adjust this as well. Then we're just going to take our same amortization table. We're going to say, well, it should be 92,655 on this note. So we're just going to say, okay, well, there's the note 100,000 minus the 92,655, 7,345 is the difference that we're going to have. And that's, of course, the principal reduction we didn't record, which is the 2430 plus the 2448 plus the 2467. So that's what we need to record then. So we're going to say, all right, the notes payable is going to be debited to bring it down. So the 100,000 minus that amount. And then the interest has to be credited, which is kind of weird, but it needs to go down. The interest is way too high because we allocated both interest and principal to it. And it needs to go down to that. And that'll bring the balance down to, we hope, once this is recorded, the sum of these three. The interest should be three payments, 750 plus the 732 plus the 713, uh, 2,195. So if we do that, then we're going to say the note payable is going to be debited, bringing it down to 92,655. That's what we want now. That's our balance. And then the interest is going to go from 9,540 down by the 7,345 to 2,195, which makes sense because that's going to be the sum 
of the interest for the three periods paid. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.